In this chapter, we're going to take the next step and learn how to use the basic mixing functions in Cubase. We'll take a quick look at how to set levels, adjust panning, use equalization, apply effects, and select an appropriate mixdown format. And even send our mixdown directly to the music sharing website, SoundCloud. Let's take a moment and look at the production cycle to see how the mixdown phase fits in. There are no hard and fast rules, but here's how the process usually flows. The first step is tracking. Tracking is the process of recording individual parts, like the instrument track that we set up in Chapter 4. The second step is normally overdubbing. That's the process of adding additional tracks to your basic recording. The next step is often editing. This can be cleaning up unwanted noises, fixing MIDI notes, and compositing multiple takes into a single performance. We'll show you how to use the powerful new compositing tools in Chapter 6. Then we move to Mixdown. During Mixdown, all of the tracks, effects, and edits are combined into a single file. For music production, this is normally a stereo file. We typically mix one song at a time. Finally, after all the songs for a collection are mixed, they need to be mastered for duplication and distribution. We'll look briefly at mastering in an upcoming chapter. Now in an analog studio, the engineer mixed a song by playing a multi-track recorder through a physical mixing desk and then recording that onto a two-track tape machine, all in real time. In Cubase, the actual mixdown process consists of exporting a multi-track file through a virtual mixing desk into a two-track file. Since we've finished editing, we can resize the track height in the project window to give us more room to work. And let's call up the Mix Console. We can select a variety of items to display in our channel strip. And switch on the meters. Now begin playback and adjust the levels of each track until you get a satisfactory rough mix. You'll probably have to make small changes as we adjust equalization and effects. Now there are very few hard and fast rules about mixing, and there are lots of options. Be sure to read the user's manual, visit the Steinberg knowledge base, and visit the Cubase community forums for detailed advice about mixing techniques. You can create group tracks to control large numbers of elements at once, and we'll use this feature more in later chapters. You can also link several tracks. Now the faders move together. I'm going to start by setting the drums so that the loudest parts are just under the peak level. Now I'll bring in the piano and guitar. I'll pan the piano off to the left and the guitar off to the right to create a wider stereo image and to make room for the voice in the middle. Next, I'll use equalization or simply EQ to help the tracks fit together better. EQ is simply a filter that can be adjusted to boost some frequencies and cut others. You can think of it as an elaborate tone control. You can use EQ correctively to fix problems or artistically to create effects. Let's use EQ to fix one problem. If I solo the acoustic guitar, the sound has a little too much bass in it. Most likely, I put the microphone too close to the sound hole during recording. 
we can use EQ to fix this. Start by clicking the E button on the track to open the editor. The editor has insert effects along the left side, EQ in the center, send effects to the right, and track controls. We'll look at effects in just a moment. The EQ can adjust up to four frequency ranges at once. Begin by clicking to turn on each of the EQ sections. Each band has three controls, gain, frequency, and Q. Use the gain control to boost or cut the volume of the specific frequency. Use the frequency control to select what tonal range you want to adjust, and use the Q control to shape how tightly or how broadly these adjustments are applied. Now, here are two rules of thumb for using EQ. If possible, try to get the sound you want by cutting rather than boosting. This will leave you with a cleaner mix when you're finished. Second, try to avoid using more than six decibels of gain unless you're trying for an extreme effect. If you have to use a lot of EQ to fix the tone, you can probably get a better sound by using a different microphone or a different microphone placement. Now I've learned that many acoustic guitars have extra bass sound centered around 150 to 200 hertz. So I'm going to start in that area to fix the problem. Here's another trick. If you're trying to eliminate a problem frequency, you may be able to locate it faster by using an extreme boost and then fishing with the frequency control. There's the problem. That's the frequency range which is too loud. Now that I've identified it, I'll use a subtle cut to ease it out of the track. Let's listen to it with the rest of the mix. If you want to do a quick A-B comparison of your EQ adjustment, Use the Bypass button to cycle the EQ in and out. Okay, we're almost ready to try our first mix down. But first, let's return to the subject of effects. There are literally thousands of effect plugins that can be used with Cubase. The more common types include reverberation, delay or echo, dynamics, which is volume control, and modulation effects like chorusing and flanger. You can add effects to a track two basic ways. You can insert the effect across the entire signal path and run 100% of the track through the effect. Or you can set up a separate effect track and then send only some of the track through it for a more blended or subtle effect. Each method is useful in different situations. For example, if I want to use a compressor to help control the volume of a track, I need the compressor to control the entire track. So I'll run the entire track through the compressor by using the insert method. However, if I want to use an effect in a more subtle fashion, which is common with reverb, I'll set it up as a send effect. This allows the process signal and the original signal to blend. Let's insert a compressor across the drum track to help tame some of the louder portions. Open the drum track editor, create an insert effect. Compressors will be found on the dynamics menu. Turn on the effect and let's select an appropriate preset. And close the editor. Now let's set up an effects send for reverb. We'll apply just a little reverb to all of the tracks to help create the illusion that they were all recorded at the same time in the same acoustic space. This will help tie our mix together. But be careful with reverb, it is easy to overdo it. Okay, we've adjusted the levels, EQ, pan, and effects. Let's generate our first mix down. 
Open the File menu and select Export Audio. The Export dialog allows us to choose the quality and the location of our mixed file. A stereo wave file will be the highest resolution, but it also tends to be very large. Since this is just a rough mix and we may want to send it by email to other musicians, let's mix it down in the MP3 format. That'll be good enough quality for now and a small enough file size to move around easily. Select Format here. Fill in the ID tag information and make sure that our file path is correct. Let's use the desktop. You can have Cubase automatically add the mixed file back into the project or use it as the foundation for a new project. The post process area gives you the option of opening your mix down in WaveLab if you have WaveLab installed or sending your mix down directly to SoundCloud. But let's save these options for our final mix down later. Finally, click export. And here's our first mixed stereo file. Let's move on to chapter six, where we'll see how to take our demo to the next level using some of the advanced features in Cubase.